One Urban Eyes Eclairs Podcast. Welcome back to the Polishing Podcast. Uh, my name is Nico, otherwise known as Nico All Powerful. And yeah, this is the Polish Podcast, and that was weird, and I don't care. Uh, going solo because Allie's not feeling well. Um, she hurt her shoulder or neck like while sleeping, and it's just really bothering her. And we don't know where the fucking mount is still so she'd still have to hold the mic i i honestly don't understand what happened to that so i'm gonna try to look for it after i'm done recording this again but i really honestly have no idea where it could have gone i wonder how much that would cost just the mounting hardware i'll look into it but that's not here nor there um but yeah that's why she's not here uh i also changed the webcam settings a little bit and changed the recording path for the um, the recording, duh, uh, because somebody was saying that certain things could help with overloads. I also got rid of a bunch of scenes because apparently if you lo- if you have a bunch of scenes on OBS and the sources are shared between the scenes, it loads everything, which could be possibly why I was getting all these overloads whenever I tried to record. And I'm also recording to a st- uh, solid state drive right now, and then I'll just move the file over to my hard drive whenever i get whenever we're done um recording so hopefully all this stuff means a better quality video podcast i really hope it does also i just realized i need to free frame my face if i'm gonna do what i was thinking about doing which is like cutting out the top here and the bottom here to make the podcast a little more cinematic looking uh the only problem with doing that is that i have to actually make sure i'm framed in such a way that i'm not cutting off part of my head or something oh you lose out on the logan poster but you do also lose out on the cat litter box that's something you don't actually need to see um so i just want to double check how many why is it in kilobytes no, a long episode of the podcast is like 2 million kilobytes. But how many, like, it doesn't help me. How many is that in stuff that I give a shit about? <laughs> how many kilobytes? Uh, bytes in a megabyte. 1,000 kilobytes is one megabyte. So if I do 2,000, 20, 200, 2 million... That's 2,000 megabytes. How many megabytes are in a gigabyte? 100? How many? This is great podcast content. Um, Many megabytes in a gigabyte. 1,000 megabytes is one gigabyte. And I forgot the last thing. Shit. (laughs) Two million kilobytes is 2,000 megabytes. So 1,000 megabytes. So that would be two gigabytes. I have way more than two gigabytes on my the solid state drive. Cool. All right, we're good. This isn't going to be a long one anyway. Because by, when I'm by myself, it's just that's just how that goes. Okay, but I'm glad I know that now. So that way I don't have to worry about how much space I have left. But yeah, um, you know, podcast. You can listen to it where you get podcasts, the most popular places. Um, the polishingpodcast.com is going to be going away soon. So if you're using that still, uh, God bless you. Cause I haven't done anything with that in so long, but yeah, the actual domain is going to go away and everything because I haven't been paying for it and I'm not going to, it's just too much money to pay for my own website. Um, at least through, I don't remember what I was using. Uh, Also, I don't want to potentially burn a sponsor opportunity. So it's a good thing I don't remember off the top of my head (laughs) what uh, service I was using for that. But yeah, it's just too expensive. It's eh, and the Podbean thing is easier. It's more streamlined. It's why I'm on Spotify or we're on Spotify now. So if you use Spotify, thank you. But yeah, also sorry for this being late. It's just a you know it's just unfortunate circumstances and planning on our part uh Allie just <sighs> didn't feel like doing it a day earlier or two i don't remember off the top of my head and it's just and it's, you know there's a point where it's like okay well i'm gonna do it 
It just I should have realized that sooner. I don't have any real excuse for uploading this so late or not uploading, but recording it so late by myself because I've been off work since what's today? Is today Saturday? Wednesday? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. I've had four days off in a row. It's been pretty swell. I didn't restream for the first two days, and I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, or did I? No, I don't think I did. Um, what did I do the first day? A lot. I did a lot. Did a lot of chores and stuff to try to make sure I didn't have to do more the rest of the days off I had. Oh, and then the day after was when <sighs> just stressful stuff happened. Thought I lost my wallet. Thought I might have dropped it and somebody got a hold of it. And I went to the store, realized I didn't have it on me after getting everything I needed. But before I went to the actual, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Register. Got there. Um, and then after, but I was like, oh God, I didn't, I don't know where my wallet is. I don't have it. And then I put everything away because I'm, I've worked in retail and I know how shitty it is to like, have to reshop everything so i'm not that asshole who would just put his basket down and hope that somebody finds it at some point especially since i had some refrigerated stuff like don't do that if you're gonna get stuff out of the refrigerated areas put it back at the very least don't be that asshole who just leaves stuff everywhere because then somebody else who's not getting paid enough has to put it back it's just like come on just common decency um so i go home and like the fucking geez actually this story is pretty good for the podcast so I'm at the store already talked about that part free, like realize I don't have my wallet on me. I'm like, shit, I probably just left it at home. Uh, text Allie. I'm like, I don't have my wallet on me. I just realized it. I was pretty much done shopping. I mean, uh, and she's like, well, they, uh, let you just like put in your information. I didn't figure it out or whether or not they would, because by the time she answered that, like said that specific thing, I'd already put everything away and I'm not, I was like, I'm not going to go back through. There's a bus in five minutes. I'm going to head home, see if I just left it at home. But then Allie was telling me like, oh, I can't find your wallet here either. It's not on your desk. It's not in the um, living room area, like where the keys and stuff are, which is where I usually just place my wallet and all that stuff. And I start to panic. I'm like, shit, wait, did I have it on me? And I dropped it or something. So I like was I was like walking out of the store I made sure to like look where I picked up a basket. And I was like, okay, it's not there. There's nothing on the ground. I don't remember. And whenever I go in the store, even if I have my earbuds in, I like loosen them so I can hear more and I lower the volume of my stuff so I don't accidentally run into people if they're like walking around a corner and stuff or if I'm running, walking around a corner. Um, you know, just be more aware. But I didn't hear my wallet fall to the ground and it's made of metal. So I would hear it clack against the tile of the floor. Um, so I was like, okay, I didn't drop it. But my idea was, okay, bus in five minutes, I'll get on the bus, go home, look for it myself. If I can't find it, I'll come back to the store and be like, hey, did anyone report a missing wallet? And at that point, if I hadn't found it, it's time to start calling the bank and like credit card companies and be like, hey, I lost my wallet. Please cancel my card. I don't know if somebody else is going to try to use it. Da, 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 da. So I'm waiting for the bus. Bus comes. Uh, this is the bus that stops right in front of our apartment building too. So I was like, sweet. I don't have to do that much. Get on it. And at some point the bus driver gets off the bus. I never saw that happen. So I was very confused to why we were sitting there for like five minutes after the bus arrived. I was honestly just like, what the hell is going on? I want to get home. I'm trying to like figure out whether or not my shit's getting stolen. Cause like I don't have a lot of money, but my Amazon credit card, has a pretty decent amount of credit on it still like a credit limit because I've been paying it mostly on time. Uh, well, not on, not mostly on time. I pay it on time every time. Cause if you don't, you get slapped with fees and you just don't do that. Don't let the fees get you. But like, I've had it long enough that the limit on it's pretty good. Uh, it's nothing to like, I couldn't put a down payment out of a house on it or anything. But like if I had to like if my computer died, I could get a whole new computer like that's how good it is. And I'm talking like a good computer like we're we're upper limits, 2080 Ti, Ryzen 3950 or 3850, all that like the, the works 
and I'd be and I'd still have a little bit of room on my credit card. I don't want to do that. Please, for the love of God, do not die on me. I don't want to do that. I God, I would because I mean, my hobbies, my this like the podcast, the things I do for fun when I'm not working, everything revolves around my computer. But fuck, I don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that. <laughs> Oh, God, I don't want to think about that. But I could. That's the thing is like my credit card has enough of a limit that I could do that. Don't want to just throwing that out there. Don't want that to happen. So I'm worried about that because somebody could have a time with it. If I don't know where it's at, if I don't cancel it in time, all that stuff. So I'm freaking out. I'm waiting for the bus to go. I'm like, what the hell is taking so long? Why are we just sitting here? Two other buses have gone around us, multiple cars. And I'm like, where the fuck is the bus? Like, what are we waiting for? What is happening? And then I see the bus driver, like, do a little speed jog, walk thing, it back onto the bus. And mind you, the bus is not off. Keys are still in. Bus is on. Somebody could have stolen this bus at any point in time. And it, they wouldn't have had any trouble because it would still it would have taken me a second to figure out what was even going on because I didn't know the bus driver wasn't on the bus. So whoever this bus driver is, I, I don't know what was going on. I don't know your experiences, but what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> what the fuck? You don't you don't you don't leave. You, what? Anyway, bus drivers back in. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? So we go, and he's going fast at this point because he's going to make up for lost time because they're supposed to be on a schedule. They're supposed to be every 15 minutes or whatever, and for whatever reason, he was off the bus. I The weirdest part is, like, if the bus driver was helping somebody with a disability off the bus or onto the bus, I could understand there was nobody in a wheelchair or that needed the bus to be, like, lowered because they have the hydraulic thing, so people who can't lift their leg up as high can... It like step onto the bus easier. None of that was happening. Nobody got off after I got on that needed help getting off because the ramp was, didn't go down. And he didn't bring anybody onto the bus. It was just him. So I really have no idea what the fuck happened or why it happened. He didn't like go in the store, pick something up and come back on. He didn't have anything in his hands. I have legitimately no idea what happened to cause the bus driver to not have been on the bus the entire time. And it's, I'm, I don't know what's going on with that, but he's speeding now. Cause he's making up lost time to the point where I ring the bell to get off. He goes right past my stop and stops like a block down the road. And I'm already stressed out because I'm like, if I got to get home to figure out whether or not my car, like my stuff is here and I need to know that first and foremost before doing anything else. So I'm a block down the road. I'm not thinking. I've If you've watched any of my streams recently, I've been complaining about my legs. The seafood department or just if you've ever been to seafood, meat, whatever, in a store. Like the fresh meats and the fresh seafood and stuff. You'll notice that like the people will go from at your eye level to above you so we can actually get into the case and everything. It's because there's a step. Constantly going up and down that one step is a lot more strenuous on your body than you would believe because it's just a single step. But if you do it a hundred times, it's like you go up and down a hundred steps, you know? So my like the part of my shin, like right beneath my knee where like that socket is that's connecting to the like other like the part of my thigh like the two parts that like really like go together has been hurting basically since the first shifts I did the first like six days in a row which was still fucking wild that I can't believe I got scheduled that much um but yeah they've been hurting since basically then that day that morning they almost didn't hurt at all to the point where I wasn't taking medicine or anything anymore because I was taking ibuprofen basically to just get through the day to, but like, you know, if you're on your legs and stuff, whatever you're putting stress on is just going to continuously still have stress applied to it. It's not going to get any better. Um, so, but I was almost healed. Like it was almost gone, but 
because I'm not thinking, I'm stressed out, thinking my wallet could be in somebody else's hands, somebody could have my credit cards, because um, I have two, one of which has a way lower limit, because I don't actually use it, but I have it, just in case. Um, I run from the bus stop to, like, right in front of my building to go across the street. I go, like, skipping up two steps at a time as I'm coming up the stairs, and I'm like, I get up here, and I'm, like, looking through stuff, I remember... I put my wallet in the closet, and this is like way after like tearing apart the bedroom, looking around the office that I'm sitting in and everything, and just like all that stuff. I look at the spot where our keys are, and I go, I know where my wallet is. And I go straight to the office closet that's like right here, right there, right over there. And uh, I open it up, reach up top, grab my wallet, and I'm like, I remember now I put this up here because that was also the day that Verizon was putting stuff in our building, like a fiber optic line into our apartment. And I mean, I just moved my cards and everything out from the living room. So that way they just weren't in sight at all, which like, it's not that I don't trust the people who install cable lines. It's just, it's just peace of mind in my part. I was always raised whenever the cable person came over to just hide all cash and stuff. I don't know why. Now that I'm thinking about it, a lot of the people that did that were people of color. And I think my dad might just have been racist. <clears throat> uh, but, you know, I don't trust strangers no matter what color their skin is <laughs> when they come into my home. <laughs> that sounds bad. Um, but also, I don't know if that's like something. I, I, and I, I just, you know. You don't trust people when they come into your home and you're like, yeah, hey, you're on your job and you don't want to get fired, but hmm, maybe today's the day that this person's okay with getting fired. But anyway, so before I get on some weird tangent, I don't trust strangers who come into my home to play, to play, Jesus, to put in cables or do internet stuff. Uh, it's nothing against y'all. It's just you're a stranger in my home. I don't know you, but you're in my home, you know. And I have to let you in my home. And I'll be nice to you. I'll be kind. I'll offer you sealed bottles of water. Because I know not to offer a, like a cup of water to people. Because, you know, you can, like, I don't want to be offered a cup of water from a stranger. Because it could be drugged. Um, so, you know, I though we don't have bottles of water. Because we don't buy, buy plastics. So, I can't really do that anymore. Oh, well. Um, shit. I, I'll make them watch me pour it. I have no idea what to do with this part. And I'm getting all, way off track. Uh, anyway, I put my money away, but then I remember where it was. And then both my legs, like as soon as the, I guess, not even adrenaline, I guess I could say. But I mean, kind of because I was that stressed out about it. Oh, hi, Nam. You know I'm doing the podcast. She doesn't try to get into my lap when I'm playing video games. It's like I do the podcast and she wants to be on it. Um, and she purring so good. Ooh, look at that little face. Good girl. Um, but yeah, the, I guess the adrenaline, whatever you want to say, stopped being in my system. And I just instantly felt my knees hurt more than they had since like ev everything started. And which really, really sucked because I was basically healed at that point, unfortunately. Um, and it, it just sucked a lot and it was a terrible situation. And if I had just remembered that I put my fucking wallet in the closet, none of this would have happened. I'd be fine. And I'd just be having a good time. But no, yeah. So that's, that's a thing that happened to me recently that I'm none too proud of. I'll be completely honest on that. I can't believe I did that. 100% cannot believe it. It really, really fucking sucks because now, I mean, like, they don't hurt that bad today. Like, I haven't taken medicine. I, like, did chores and stuff because, unfortunately, I decided that I was going to vacuum today instead of, like, I don't know, any other day. But, yeah. Uh, excuse me. Big yawns. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's just, you know, the luck of the draw sometimes. You just fuck yourself, and that happens. And you got to move forward and past it, because if you don't, what are you doing? 
I don't know. I it's I faked getting deep there, but that's so fake. Uh, that's that's not real. That's not a that's not real deep at all. Um, but yeah, so that happened. It wasn't fun. I'm not proud of it. And I hope everyone else had a better time than I did than re hurting yourself because I'm an idiot. Um, but yeah, no, we went to the store yesterday, got all of our stuff, and now it's fine. You know, because. Allie went with me and I made sure to have my wallet on me and not be an idiot. <clears throat> but yeah, so that was a fun situation. Other than that, working at Whole Foods is fine. Uh, I can skin certain fish fillets now without really any issues. Uh, people who ask for salmon skin, though, especially the, the Whole Foods sell these little Atlantic salmon portions that are six ounces pre-weighed. They're pre-cut. Um is that it? Yeah, they're pre-cut, pre-weighed, all that kind of stuff. And what's the other word I'm looking for? Oh, they're scaled. So the skin doesn't even have any goddamn scales on them. And people still want it skinned. It's just like like any fish I've ever had that has had skin on it, as soon as you cook it, it separates so easily. I don't understand the people that don't want the skin. I don't get it. But as a kid... I didn't like potato skin. As an adult, I'm not a fucking idiot. So I don't understand why these whole ass adults are like, ew, fish skin. It's just fish. You you think people like what what I don't understand I don't I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't get it whatsoever. Fish skin, it's a salmon skin specifically because that's the one I know the most. Tastes fine because it tastes like how you season it. And salmon, that's it. I don't get the whole thing where people are like, oh, please take the skin off. I don't like it. Do you not know how to season your food? Like, what the fuck? Probably not. It's a lot of white people. I'll be honest. Salt, pepper, that's all we know. It's like, no, motherfucker, get some garlic in there paprika onion any fucking thing those are my go-to's by the way <laughs> salt pepper garlic powder onion powder paprika maybe get some olive oil get a nice crispy on the outside uh certain fish fish you don't need that for certain fish uh just because they're so oily that it's just there's no real reason to the lax salmon's actually one of the ones that they sell at whole foods that i work at <sighs> excuse me that you probably don't actually need to put any oil or anything in just because it's so oily on the skin and on the flesh that it's probably not going to stick to the pan. Um, and I know a lot of people talk about searing ski, uh, fish skin side down and you don't have to actually cook it on both sides. But I don't know, man. Even like I've, I've read it a bunch of times. You could just lay it skin side down, cook it for like 10, 15 minutes or something like that on like medium heat, and it cooks enough all the way through that you're fine. I just – I've I've never been able to trust myself to do that because I'm like, man, I don't know. It looks not cooked. <laughs> I don't know. I also like a nice sear on both sides of my meat. So, I don't know. It's just me. It's probably – I'm a medium rare kind of guy. Medium, medium rare. Maybe that's my whole deal. I know a lot of people like to eat their salmon kind of closer to rare, especially. So maybe that's just my issue is that I don't like my salmon as as raw as other people do. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making all this shit up uh, to try to justify my own um, untrustworthiness of the meat I'm cooking. But yeah. I don't understand people that don't want skin on their fish. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I also don't understand the people that come in and want whole fish. Because at Whole Foods, if you buy a whole fish, we weigh it before we do anything to it. You pay for the fish. You don't pay for the filet that you get or the fish after we gut it or the fish after we stake it or the fish after we butterfly it. Those are the three ways I know how to – well, I don't know how to cut – fish for butterfly or filet i know what a steak and just gut and clean a fish um a steak like staking a fish you basically just cut it into chunks which like whatever um is not actually that hard 
but like filleting it, you have to like cut it or cross it and everything. But you get like maybe half the weight, but you're paying for the whole thing. It's I don't get it. Honestly, like just take the cleaned fish gutted home. If you don't want the head, we'll cut that off for you. No problem. Don't want the tail. Do that too. But take the whole fish. The bones and stuff don't, they're not going to stay on after it's cooked. It just doesn't work like that. Unless you don't know how to cook food, which is 100% likely. <laughs> but yeah, I don't get it. I I wouldn't buy a whole fish, even if it's like, oh, you got Branzini on sale. It's real cheap now. It to, It's still too much money for what you're asking for because you're not getting that much meat especially branzini it's really it's a smaller fish um and like we had it on sale for like ten dollars a pound and most of them were about a pound or no two pounds two pounds i think so and it's just like damn that's still expensive as shit (laughs) especially for how much meat you get there's somebody a lady came in she wanted two of them filleted it's like half the amount of like like the flesh you get out of that to cook is like half the weight of the fish at that point if that (laughs) Excuse me. So you're paying twice as much as you would. I don't know. I don't get it. I'm probably while I work there, I'll probably like buy fillets and stuff, you know, to try things because there's like we had Mahi Mafi for a day, but then (laughs) it sold out and we couldn't get any more in. But like that was there. And I've heard it's really good for fish tacos. I don't know for sure. And people will ask me questions like, oh, what do you recommend? I'm like, oh, I've ever had a salmon tilapia. Apparently I have cod because that's the main fish they put in fish sandwiches in restaurants. Um, I've had crab once. If that. No, I've had crab rangoons. So like technically I've had crab, but it's been covered in all kinds of stuff. Let's see, is there anything else I've eaten that I knowingly have eaten? I haven't had flounder. No. I'm trying to, excuse me, think of it. I mean, shrimp, but like, when people are like, oh, where's the shrimp from? Most of them are from either Vietnam or Thailand. And people go, oh. I'm like, it's Whole Foods. They vet stuff way more seriously than others, um, like chain grocery stores so like i don't know why you're going Ooh, about it and it's shrimp like i don't know it's, it's whenever somebody's like well what was the difference between these shrimp it's like well that one's already peeled that one's ready to be peeled and it's deveined or this one's peeled and deveined that one's ready to be peeled and deveined that one's got the whole shell on it and it's big like i don't fucking know dude it, they, I get that they expect you to have a little more knowledge than like your average person, but it, I don't, it's the same thing at Target when people are like, well, what about, what do you think about this vacuum? I'm like, I don't fucking know the vacuums. I'm not a vacuum technician. Like it's, it's a Target, not a vacuum specialty store. I don't know shit about vacuums. The only thing I know about vacuums was there this one Reddit thread from years ago is like from a vacuum repairman. It was like an AMA for, for a vacuum repairman and something is like coffee guy or something. I don't remember his name, but like his username, but he was talking about like people were asking him like, Oh, what's the best vacuum if I have carpet and pets? And they're like, Oh, these are the brands that you would want to look out for. These brands suck for that. Like, and he like knew his shit, but like, I'm not that guy. I'm just a shitty, not even paid a living wage person at Target who has no like I I bought my vacuum off Amazon because it said it's really good at getting up pet hair. That's it. I got nothing else for you, my dude. So when people come up to me and are like, which, which did, like we had anchovies, this guy was like, how how do you cook these? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I've never cooked anchovies. For all I know is you can just, like, I mean, I've seen them, like, cooked whole on a fucking pizza, but I've I've never done it. He's like, do you fry them? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, what do you mean you don't know? You work here. Da, 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 da. I'm like, D- just because I work in seafood doesn't mean I've eaten all the seafood. I could work there and be a fucking vegetarian. Like, dietary restriction doesn't mean jack shit for what you sell. 
It means you're pretty terrible at selling things because you can't tell people what they want. But I'm also not going to spend all the money I make at Whole Foods just to try the fucking stuff that we normally have in stock. Like, that's... To do that, it would be pretty goddamn expensive. They have swordfish and, like, salmon steaks a lot. And those are not cheap by the pound. Also, they have uh, Chilean sea bass fillets that are fucking expensive. It's like $25 a pound. I'm not going to spend $60 on just fish to potentially try so I could fi- be like, oh, I liked it when I cooked it this way. I mean, I'll, somebody's probably going to be like, eh, you should probably do that. But I'm like, yeah. I know the salmon's real good. When learning the skin stuff, I accidentally fucked up a piece of salmon and it got damaged out for me, so I got to take it home. And even though the skin wasn't really on it, but it kind of was, but it wasn't, um, and I kind of butchered a piece of fish, it was still delicious when I cooked it. It was so good, honestly. Um, But, like, I don't know. It's weird. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, well, probably wouldn't be a terrible idea to bring some of the home, some of the stuff that I know is, like, ordered every day. Like, the salmon's good. I don't need to do that again unless I just want to have salmon. But we have like two frozen fillets in our fr- uh, freezer right now that I should actually take out from when we shopped at Aldi and stuff. Um, also, I don't get why people buy fresh fish and then are like, please take off the scales, the skin, just the fat. I'm like, what are you fucking doing? A, fat on meat is taste. That's flavor. Stop it. You, 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 are you the same person that goes over to the meat counter and is like, I want that ribeye, but cut off all that fat around it because you're a dumbass. They probably are, but still. Um, what else? The skin is delicious. If you don't want skin, scales, all that stuff, just buy some frozen fucking packages of salmon that are already skinned. Just do that. You'll save everyone else time. It like if you freeze meat one time, it's fine. It's not gonna Yeah, it's not fresh. But you don't deserve fresh food if you're gonna fucking butcher it into nothingness anyway. In my opinion, this is my opinion. Um, (laughs) But yeah, like, I don't get it. Uh, So, I don't know. Working there has been an experience. There's not so many Karens as I thought there would be. There's one lady with some... mm -hmm, That I did not like. She wanted uh, some stuff very specifically. um, Like, if it wasn't, like, literally right... Because a lot of people are like, oh, can I get three quarters of a pound? If you're at point eight five, they're like, oh, whatever, that's fine. Or if you're at, like, point seven, they're like, yeah, that's fine, too. Because they know, like, I mean, there are other people around, and also, you got it close enough. But there was this one guy there who was like, I want one and a quarter of this. And I put his stuff up there, and it was like 1.4. He's like, oh, I need one and a quarter. I put two other things, it was less than a pound. And he's just like, Ugh. I'm like, fucking, what... Like, people expect the exact thing that they want, and it doesn't, it's just sometimes, like, I was told by my boss, like, cutting up a piece of meat that is, like, $20 a pound, if someone wants half, like, like a third of it, like, they want a third of a pound, so 0.3 pounds, it's like, well... Sometimes we can't do that because like trying to, but the thing is like trying to explain to a person like, look, if I cut this, there's going to be, they're going to like, if this is a half pound piece, if I cut this into a third and 20% of a pound, like who's going to buy that 20%? Like if it's $20 a pound, that's still an expensive piece of meat, but nobody's going to want it. Because it's too small, they think they're not going to, like, want it with anything. And then there's people who are very particular about wanting, like, oh, I want one and a quarter pounds, but I want it to be one thing. It's like, just take the two things. What the fuck? I, I don't understand people that are that picky. Like, I get it if you're like, oh, I'm having a meal for two. I want us to have the same amount of meat and same portions. It's like, fucking, if I give you one thing that's .75 and another that's .5, just cut a little bit off of the one that's heavier so you both have the same amount of stuff. Like, don't be such a goddamn, like, ninny muggins. God, like, what the fuck? <sighs> it doesn't make any sense. People are picky as shit. 
Um, they're not that many people, but the ones that are are really picky, and it's just absurd. Like, there are people that are like, oh, can you tell a little bit of that tail end? I'm like, why the fuck do people care so much that the tail isn't on it? It's like, we, you do understand, like, we don't, like, none of this touched the fish's ass, right? Like, that's, I, I don't get it. I don't know. It, it doesn't make any sense to me that people are so picky about stuff like that. Uh, at least the ones that are picky. I had one lady come in, and I was like, oh, it's a little bit over. And she's like, that's yeah, fine. You don't got to worry about that. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And she's like, wait, do you get people that actually give a shit? Or she didn't say it like that, but, you know, she's like, do you get people who want exactly, a, like, that much? I was like, yeah, there are people that do that. And they're like, they need to get a life. <laughs> and I'm just like, I didn't say that, but. And she's like, but I did, and I'm okay with it. And I'm like, I like this lady. <laughs> this is. Like she's gonna be somebody that I'm gonna keep an eye out for because she's the kind of person I like. Um, and then there was one lady that came in that wanted like four whole fish cut like right before the whole fish are taken off the floor. It's like you're an asshole. And when like um I th- like I guess around like six o'clock is usually when the whole fish get taken off the floor. I've only, I mean, I haven't worked closing or near closing shifts that much, like into the evening. Um, But that's around the time when the first person, that's not the way to phrase that. So usually there are three people at any given point, so that way you can stagger breaks and everything. The one at 6 o'clock, usually that means your third is leaving and there's only two people. Around that time is also the same time that the whole fish are taken off the floor because it takes too long that if there's a crowd that like, like if a bunch of people were to suddenly come in that if one person was trying to cut a whole fish up, depending on how it was going to be cut, it would take too long that there like the one person trying to get all the other customers that just want fillets and stuff would be overwhelmed and it just, it doesn't work out basically so it's easier to take the whole fish and the clams and oysters off the floor put it back in the fridge and wait till the next day around 6 6 30 somewhere around there uh just so that way it's way easier to not get overwhelmed which i understand but a lady came in at one point and she was like i want four of these fish butterflied and apparently butterflied is the worst way to do something it was like four something. So it was a couple hours, but it's like yeah. butterfly. Also, who the fuck? It's just two fillets that has a little bit more back meat on it. That's it. If you ever like, I want something butterflied. You can just, you're being an asshole for asshole sake, honestly. Cause I watched like my boss and a coworker butterfly these fish because somebody wanted like she didn't know how to butterfly because she'd never done it before. And fucking it was just the most tedious kind of way to cut a fish. And it's just like, what the fuck? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm supposed to learn how to do both butterfly and filleting at some point because I have to so I can actually do it. Um, I don't know when that's going to be because you don't really get a lot of opportunities to practice, unfortunately. And I say that because, like, you can't just fillet stuff randomly because then it just, you, like, it doesn't, you know, make any sense. Also, it, like, I guess if there's, like, fish that is not great looking anymore, you could fillet it and see if the meat's fine and they sell the meat by itself. But I don't I don't know how often that happens. So, re- unfortunately, recently when anyone's asking to fillet, I just let somebody, like, I ask somebody's help because... I mean, I don't know how to do it. I'm not going to go, yeah, I can do that. And then f- ruin a fish, especially a whole fish, since those are more expensive. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Working at Whole Foods has been a trip. Uh, the pay is nice, though I don't know what's going on with my scheduling. So then, as the night of recording, I'm working the next day. So tomorrow, if you're listening to this the same day, probably not. Uh, if you're listening to this when I upload it just everywhere, then it's tonight um, from 2 to 1030. So I'm closing, which shouldn't be that big a deal. I hope. Man, I really hope. Uh, I'm only going to be by myself for like two hours. So that's not that big a deal. 
uh, especially since like around seven o'clock, it kind of dies real hard in there. Um, like almost every single time I've worked till eight, it's died like around seven o'clock, like hardcore. Like you get maybe two people every like 10 minutes or something, which is not a lot when it's you like way, like the traffic's way higher than that usually. Um, but yeah, so that should be fine. Um, what was I going to mention before that? Oh, and then I get the day off and then I think I work two days and then I'm off two days. Then I work two days. I'm off one day. I work four days. I'm off a day. I work a day. I'm off a day. I work two days. I'm off a day. Like, it's just like, if I want to like the, what I'm doing, right. What's happening right now where I'm like, I had four days off. I'm going to work and I'm going to have a day off. I'm going to work two days. I'm going to have two days off. Like that sounds like part time to me working four days in a row. And like working a day, having a day off, working four days, having a day off, working another day. That doesn't seem like part time to me. It, I mean, I guess technically it is based on hours, but the amount of days worked doesn't. Um, and that's it kind of sucks that aspect of it because it means less time to dedicate to this. And thankfully, like Allie is only busy like Tuesday and Thursday. Those are like the days she's got her stuff going on. So it's easier to schedule stuff. So like I work tomorrow, which is Sunday. Um, and then I'm off Monday. If all things go well, Allie's not hurt anymore. Like her like soreness in her neck and stuff is fine. Um, we might be able to record another podcast together finally and upload that. And, you know, everything will be fine as long as she doesn't have anything else going on that day. And it'll work out and it'll be great. It'll be early. That's what I want. But then, like, if anything else were to happen, I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, like the next day off. She works all day that day. I can tell him at six something. She's not going to want to do a podcast. I get it. She teaches. She talks. And she tutors. She talks. She's not going to want to do more talking. I get that. So it's either Monday or Friday or technically Wednesday because, like, well, I don't know what time I work till. So it could be too late for me. But that's the thing is like, even though Allie is more of an outgoing person, you know, there's only so much work you can put in before your body's just like, all right, you got to stop. You got to, you got to play some video games, look at memes, watch some TV, do something to recharge your shit. For me as an introvert, I don't like the days I can stream after work. Like if I were to work from eight to four yeah eight to four or if they schedule me seven and a half hours eight to three and thir- eight to three thirty or if they schedule me five hours eight to one if they schedule me earlier seven to three seven to two thirty like those days like i get that because like it's around the time i can't well not really around the time i would normally stream it's later uh but like the days where i work from noon to eight thirty noon to five thirty you know later uh i don't want to stream because it's like those are the busy sections like those afternoon to night um shifts are when like the store is the busiest because that's when it's like right around lunch and when people are getting off work you hit both of those things if you're working from open to like afternoon there's a little bit of a spike you hit right before you leave but for the most part it's pretty chill you just have to worry about making sure everything's good for when the store opens and that's it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's like those days, but what I was saying is like those days where I'm like, okay, I'll still stream for like two hours till six or something or till seven. And then I'll like wind down, hang out with Allie and stuff like that's fine. I can do that, but it requires more energy because like, saying hi to every single person that walks up to the seafood case be like hey how can i help you you need any have any questions da, 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 like any of that stuff and then coming on here not here specifically but at like the same spot for streaming um and being like oh hey what's up guys playing a game trying to like vocalize all my thoughts like actually going through that process it just it requires the same energy that you know um what's the word i'm looking for the same energy reserve like to be outgoing and social and stuff to do streaming and excuse me recording podcast all that stuff as it would 
to be nice and polite and courteous to people in a store. It just does. There's one of the reasons way, way, way back in fucking was 2016 at this point when I was like streaming paladins and making paladins videos or trying to working full time at target where it just, it didn't work because I just didn't have the energy. It's like, yeah, I got home at two 30, but I also woke up at five every day to start work at like what? Six. I don't know. Four something to work at six. I don't remember. It was wild. Um, because you have a 30 minute unpaid break, which is the worst. I'm glad whole foods has paid breaks. You just go on your break and you come back and it's taken into account. And if you're going to work eight hours, you're there for eight hours and then you leave. I love it. It's one of, it's probably my favorite thing of working there is if my schedule says eight to four, there's no four thirty nonsense. It's eight to four. Like, yeah, I'll stay and help if it's a little busy until like, you know, we're not like, it's not chaos or something, but like, you know, it's not like this big deal that I have to like sit around and be like, Oh, uh, it's fucking it gotta be here for clocked out for a meal and some garbage. I like that more. Honestly, I really, really do. Uh, especially if one of the things, cause you know, people are like, Oh, it's a nine to five. It's like, Oh, that's eight hours. But that means, but like an uh, office job, which is what people would be like, a normal job. Fucking, you would actually be getting home at like six or something because you have to clock out an hour for lunch. And that's terrible. It's like you, you got to wake up early, you get home late, depending on where you're going from work. Like, it's just, that sucks. You're gone, like, you're up for like 12 hours before you're ever actually doing anything you want to do. That's the one th- good thing about being at Whole Foods so far is that work is eight hours. Yeah, I leave my apartment half an hour before I need to. Like, not before I need to. That's ridiculous. Half an hour before my shift starts because it takes me 15 to 16 minutes to walk to the store. So, you know, I'm there a little bit early, but like, I'm okay with being a little bit early. I'm okay with waking up early to get like coffee and stuff in me. Like, and all that. <clears throat> but it's another thing to be like, oh, I got to wake up at six o'clock. I don't get home till six thirty, seven o'clock. Like that's, that's a lot where I'm like, okay, my shift's at, what's my shift tomorrow? Two. Yeah. Two, two thirty, uh, something like that. I got to double check. Um, but I'll probably wake up at eight o'clock because that's just when I wake up. My body kind of naturally just gets up at that time anyway. And I'm supposed to be done by 10 30. Hopefully I will be. Um, but like, yeah, that's a whole day, but also I get how many hours before I go to work. If I wake up at eight fucking, if I leave at two o'clock, I get six hours before work. So that's like, I get to be at home, do stuff I would normally do at home and like have a day before my work starts, you know? But it's when you're like, oh, I don't know, like fucking uh, the earliest I've had to work was seven, like seven to three. And it's like, okay, I got to wake up at like 530, leave the house at 630. But like, I'm not going to wake up earlier than that (laughs) and all that garbage. So I don't know. It's been good. There's, you know, but you know, it's got its cons as everything does. I don't like talking to people that much. Uh, I'm getting scheduled more than I'd like. I mean, it's more money, which is nice, but like, I don't, I did the math. If I worked 24 hours every week, I'd be completely fine when it comes to paying for my, my bills and stuff. So the fact that I'm working more is kind of like, all right, I mean, yay money, especially since I have to pay off a lot of credit card debt from using that while I was kind of unemployed. Um, whatever. (laughs) But you know, I don't know. I I wish I wasn't getting, um, scheduled as often as I was. It's just, it would be nicer and easier for me to get into it or like to ease myself into the job if I wasn't being scheduled that often. But you know, I'm just rolling with the punches as it is right now. Um, after, you know, February, 
if like if I'm still get scheduled a lot, I'll talk to somebody and be like, Hey, look, I signed on this part time. I meant that. I was like I was looking for twenty four to like twenty nine hours. Not really that much more. I was hoping to maybe only work like three days, four at the most a week. So like I I mean, other than that, everything's been cool. I wish like if we can do that, that'd be great. But if you know, because I explained to them, like, I have other things I want to do. And I like Whole Foods isn't my only job. Um, But, you know, I am malleable. Like it's it's a flexible thing I do like streaming this um, and all that. But like some light editing, uh, but all that stuff is like flexible, but also I need time to do that. But you're not if you're not giving me that time, then I need to be like, hey, I need to be scheduled less. This is too much for me. This isn't what I signed on for. And if they're like, oh, well, da, 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 I'm like, OK, well, then you're going to have to find a different part time person. Like, I'll, I'll just I'll have to make it's like I'll do that. I will, because it's like that's not what I signed on for. That's not what I agreed to. You knew that coming like I was I explained that coming into this, that this was part time. I was flex like I am flexible and the things I do are flexible, but I have to make time for these things. So that's the one thing that kind of sucks is right now I'm getting scheduled a lot more than I'd like. And I don't really want to have that conversation, but I will if I have to, because this is important to me. The podcast, my stream, those things are really important to me. Are they the biggest things ever? No, that's not the point. The point is I want those things make me happy. And the people I work with are cool. I like them so far. I don't hate going to work. Like, I'm not excited to go to work tomorrow, but I'm not like, oh, God, no, I got to work tomorrow. Like, it's not something I'm completely dreading. I might have to get a lift home, but eh, that's whatever. I just don't feel comfortable walking home at 1030 at night. Um, I, I mean, even though I like the road I go down is busy, like it's a main road. I don't there's not that many um, street lights walking towards that road. So I, I'm just like, eh, I'd rather just call a lift or something, even if it's going to God, I don't want to pay that bill, but it's probably safer. Uh, but yeah, man, I actually talked a lot longer about stuff than I thought I would. <laughs> just Sometimes when you haven't talked about your whole new uh, life shit, it sneaks up on you. So this is the Whole Foods and fucking dumbass wallet story episode, apparently. Uh, but yeah, I would say overall Whole Foods has been okay. I feel sometimes like I'm learning things before I need to learn them. Like um, they were teaching me how to do like the out of stock stuff. And like I can't even log into it. It just says I'm not authorized to log in. And I don't know when I'll even be authorized to do it. There's a thing to like check the temperatures of all the coolers. I don't have a way to log into that yet. And it's like cool to be taught that stuff, but it it would be nicer if I was taught that when I could actually do anything with it. (laughs) I don't know. Just throwing that out there. Um, There's also things I don't know, like when to go out of from behind the case and look at like the frozen stuff that we have on the floor and the smoke deck, which is all like the smoked salmon and smoked meats that we're in charge of. Like, I don't, I don't know when to check those at all. I just, I have no idea. Nobody said anything about that. Um, I don't know. Like I was assigned to clean something and I am again and i don't know what it is the first thing i didn't know what it was but it was like mobile merch i don't i don't know what that is still uh and then the now the thing i'm assigned to clean looks like it might say gauntlets gaslets i honestly have no idea i can't read it (laughs) to someone whoever wrote it i can't read their handwriting for this one particular word and I don't know what that is. And I'm like, and it's like, 
it says it's like if you don't do your cleaning duties, you could be written up for a disciplinary thing. And I'm like, I don't know what this is, and no one's explained it. I know to clean the floor, but like at night when it's slower. I know to clean the back sink of all the scales from doing the whole fish that day. Uh, I know to clean all of the bins and everything and the two sinks that we do. So that way, like people don't come in to dirty dishes and I know where to put up everything that I would normally clean. So they dry. I don't know what other, this other thing is. Um, I don't know exactly what to do with the shellfish i'll ask tomorrow what to do with that uh that comes like usually around the same time you put away the whole fish you also put away not the shellfish the uh oysters because there's clams and mussels that we usually have out there as well but you around the same time you do that you also put away the oysters but i don't know what to do with the shellfish tags like there's certain things where i'm like i feel like i should have been taught this before i closed Especially since I'm scheduled to close two more times in February. So, like, I don't know. This is kind of important. <laughs> but uh, I'll just ask a lot of questions tomorrow. That's the thing is anytime I'm, like, unsure about something, I make sure to ask. If somebody asks me for a recommendation, I ask somebody who's more knowledgeable. And that's a thing you learn as you get older. That even if you think something's a dumb question, it's better to ask something multiple times than it is to guess and have it be wrong like what i think what is it a popular thing is measure something twice and hang it up once or something along those lines uh but it, but it basically means double check yourself and your work so you don't have to you know f like you don't have you don't mess it up uh it's better for me to be like um, what's the thing I'm looking at? Like, oh, if somebody's like, hey, can you do this? It's better for me to be like, I don't know what that is. Or and not, that's not a great example because it's not really affirming. Like, oh, somebody, something I knew about. But if somebody's like, oh, can you put this away? I'm like, hey, just to double check or just to make sure this goes in this spot. Right. And they're like, yeah, it's like, good. Like that, that's okay. If you're new. Hey, you're not going to learn unless you ask questions. So it's okay to be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you for like, be like, I don't, I want to make sure before I do something, is this where this goes? And if they say yes, then you'd be like, cool. I'm going to go do that now. So, yeah, I don't know. That's just something you learn growing up and especially new jobs, new things. Don't be afraid to ask questions that are deemed dumb because how the hell else are you supposed to learn? And don't like, apologize for it like say like be nice about it but like be direct and be like hey i don't know where this goes can you tell me or just to make sure that i'm doing this right da, 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 just because you don't want to fuck something up if you can avoid it it just makes more sense it's, it puts less work on other people to know what you're doing than it to do it wrong but yeah this is a 58 minute podcast Woo! This is a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought this would be way under an hour, maybe like at the half hour point. But I, you know, like I said earlier, didn't, I haven't talked about this literally at all yet. But yeah, um, that's a, a probably it. I got. I mean, I've been playing The Witcher and I started playing Monster Hunter after I bought Iceborne. That's it. You want to check out any of my Witcher playthrough? Um, I need to highlight some of it so before it goes away. Unless it did already? I don't know. It's still happening on twitch.tv slash Nico All Powerful, N I C C O A L L P O W E R F U L. Uh we I, I beat Hearts of Stone, the DLC. That's done. Um I'm doing the final preparations quest for the main story. And then I went in the Blood and Wine and I met a character named Regis who when catching up with Geralt said Geralt told him that we found Siri and defeated the wild hunt. So I'm thinking I'm going off a hunch here. I can beat the main story of Witcher three and then come back and do blood and wine. And I might do that <laughs> because uh, there's a certain point where I'm just like, okay, I want to like finish it. Like I want to say I've beaten the Witcher three's main story and maybe come back to blood and wine later but I'm just like, all right, I get it. 
Like it's I've played like a hundred something hours at this point, and I'm like, there's still this entire DLC area that's an actual massive area has a shit ton of side quests in it. And I'm like, oh man, this is a lot. Like it's starting to overwhelm me, and I think I need to go back to the main game and just finish out the story and any straggling like side quests that I pick up along the way because I think I'm, most of them are out of the way at this point and just finish that out and then come back to Blood and Wine later because I don't know that I can finish Blood and Wine then come back and do the story. I just don't know that I want to devote that much more time to the game which is not great on my part to say but that's just how I feel because honestly I start playing Monster Hunter again and I'm like oh yeah Monster Hunter kicks all kinds of ass <laughs> just now that I have Iceborne, I'm getting my ass all kinds of kicked. Uh, the first two, Beotidus and what is it, Bon, Bon Borrow or whatever. The first two master rank monsters beat my ass. Uh, pretty pretty good. Uh, I think Beotidus, Beotidus. I don't know how to pronounce it. I forgot already. Uh, faint made me faint twice the first time I was fighting it. Uh, thankfully it's in an exhibition, so you don't actually lose anything for it. Like it wasn't a hunt per se, but I'm like, Oh, that's right. Uh, also it doesn't help that I was using the guardian armor, which is great for high rank, like legitimately really good for high rank or not guardian defender, but guardian defender is the same thing has the same attributes, all that stuff. Uh, defender armor and the defender. I was using charge blade. Yeah, I know that's go ahead. Go ahead. Say it. If you play monster hunter, go ahead. Say it. Dirty casual. I don't care. I like the charge blade. I liked it in Monster Hunter 4 U, where it was, but to be fair, it was overpowered as fuck in that game. Uh, just because it was the first game they introduced it. And that happened in, what is it, 3 or 3 U, where um, the switch, like whatever they introduced the Switch X, I think it was 3 or 3 U, which I don't remember which version of 3. Uh, it was broken in that when for whatever reason, whenever they introduce a weapon, it's fucking busted and it just does so much more damage than any other weapons. Uh, but I liked it in that and I like the options that get got in Iceborne as well. The chainsaw mode is fucking cool as shit. I think it's I don't it's not called that, but you basically turn your charge blade into a fucking chainsaw. That's so cool. Um, but yeah, I like that a lot. Um but yeah, the weapon is still decent. I feel like it's taking a really long time to kill things, but all of the starter master rank weapons either have a little less sharpness or a little less power, like attack power than the defender charge blade. So I don't think excuse me, getting a new weapon would actually um help me kill things faster. It's just it it was just so strong for high rank that of course I was able to melt through even Elder Dragons and get through the last bit of high rank before Iceborne and just, like, rocket through it. So I'm also used to killing things in, like, five minutes, somewhere around there, five, eight, eight where this is taking, like, 15, 20 minutes, which is about, like, how long it usually takes to kill monsters. Like, if you're not using more powerful weapons and stuff, then, like, this, like if you're on the same level or underneath under level technically like a quotes air quotes under level for that one uh, encounters but the armor like the base def defenses for master rank armor even on like bone armor is damn near double that of my defender armor and my defender armor is mostly upgraded so uh the first thing i did was hunt a puke puke to extinction <laughs> not really um but i hunted a puke puke a bunch to get a full set of its armor not because i thought the skills were like overly great or anything i just know what the puke puke does and it didn't get any new tricks for master rank like the base puke puke i know there is a variant or subspecies either or um new one for master rank but i just hunted the regular one because i was like i know i'll be able to kill it it won't take that long, and it didn't. And I'll have armor that has almost double defenses. And that means I'll take way less damage on any other fights. So then I can focus on getting something. It's like, okay, well, then what works well bleh, works well for the charge blade? You know, any attack up stuff. Like if you want to just go straight DPS um, 
artillery, I think, gives me another um, f- uh, file or vial, not file. I want to say vial. I don't remember. Um, so I'll have six instead of five, which is good because then you can do more combos and your super amped elemental discharge does more dam- damage um, because it'll have that extra shock wave and stuff like that. Um, bombardier. Well, does that work for that? Well, it does for wait. Uh, I'm trying to remember if Bombardier works for Charge Blades. I don't remember. I know the current Charge Blade I'm using has Blast Damage on it, so if I get anything that increases Blast Damage, that would, in turn, make it do more damage whenever it hits, like, a Blast proc happens. Um, And stuff like that. Just, like, figuring out an actual set that will enhance the weapon that I'm actually using. Whereas right now, I'm just like, I need better defenses so I don't get two shot. That was it. Well, yeah. Other than that, that's about it for me. I haven't done anything other than those two things. Play a little bit of Hades, the uh, Super Giant Games, roguelike, or roguelite, <laughs> roguish. There we go. Uh, that's my term. If any, you see anybody using it, that's me. I started that roguish games. Uh, played a little bit of that. It's really good. I just, I mean, I got myself addicted to monster hunter again uh so i'm probably just going to be playing that a lot especially since i i haven't played iceborne at all so i'm interested in seeing like like i know the last boss it's a ishara volda ishara volda i don't remember how to pronounce its name because i don't remember how it's spelled uh and i know some of the dlc monsters like rajang and safi jiva which is like a grown-up xeno jiva which xeno was the main games final monster and then like i know about those from console people getting them already but that's fine i don't give a shit about like oh what that monster's in it like uh, before iceborne came out on consoles they were teasing and showing off which new monsters there were so like i know there's glavinus and uh Zenogre, uh what is that fucker that punches shit? Oh my god, Brachidios. Like those kinds. Of, like I knew all those were in the game, which I've actually fought. Because I have Generations for my 3DS. Though I sold my 3DS in Generations, so I don't have it anymore. But I fought Glavinus in that. Uh, for you had Brachidios in it because your guild arm. Uh, her, she was in love with Brachidios, which was weird, but also kind of funny. Uh, Zenogre's in for you. Uh, fought Tigrex and for you like they're gonna be harder because those were all low rank or high rank fights and this and master rank is what G rank used to be uh, apparently Capcom when they were like oh we're naming it master rank because it makes more sense and people were like well why isn't it G rank and they were like well we just like the letter G that was the whole reason they called it that before like you know A B C D F G oh yeah G's cool <laughs> that's it it had no actual word behind it they just thought it sounded good uh but now it's like master rank it's like okay then you know a little more oomph to it instead of just being like g um since the g didn't mean anything uh but so they're gonna hit harder and be faster and stuff like that because they're just gonna be the harder versions of the monsters that i fought when they weren't as hard though to be fair a lot of those fights i was also using sword and shield I was a sword and shield main on console, like on my PS4 when I was playing Monster Hunter. And I had as many swords and shields as I really needed. I had the Legiana one for ice. I had Teostras for blast. I had pink Rathians for poison. I had a sleep one, a paralysis one. Wait, did, did those exist for sword and shield? I, they might have. I don't remember off the top of my head. Because I like the DPS of Sword and Shield, and I like the ability to, like... Because the Sword and Shield has an unlimited combo. If you turn while attacking, um, you can continue... Like, you do the two hit while turning, and then you can go back into your combo, and you can turn again, and you can just keep attacking. So it's great for DPS. Um, I used to like Twin Blades a lot, but I just... I never could get used to the whole activating a thing to drain the shit out of your stamina to like and then building that meter up and then it would constantly you ruin your stamina and then they nerfed dual blades a little bit by getting rid of your demon dash when you were fully charged 
but out of demon form. It's just, and I was like, oh, I don't like that. That that didn't feel great for me. Um, so I was just like, oh, I'll just not use dual blades, even though I like the idea of them a lot. Um, but yeah, sword and shield was my shit. I like charge blade a lot. I used bow a lot, especially against certain enemies. Like Akushala Deora is like way easier to fight with bow just because you don't need to be that close anymore. Uh, same with Diablos. He's really easy to fight with bow. Uh, there's just certain monsters that it's like, oh, okay, yeah, this is just easier if you're using a different type of weapon. Um, and I like, and before you, like, no, I don't mean to definitively say those monsters are easier with bow. They're easier with bow-ish weapons, like the heavy or light bow gun and the bow. Um, I just prefer the bow over the bow guns because I like the mobility of the bow, especially in world because of the way the charging works and where you dash and shoot and that charges your bow instead of just holding it charging it and doing one big shot you can do a bunch of small shots into a big shot and i like that a lot um i haven't tried bow since being on pc though i've heard they they fixed pc controls in base monster hunter world but then they borked it when iceborne came out so i wonder if it's still borked because there was a patch that came out that helped fix things but i wonder if bow feels weird because they fixed like mouse acceleration and stuff because that was the weirdest part of using mouse and keyboard at first because when people heard monster hunter pc they were like oh bows bow guns and stuff they're gonna be great because you're gonna have fucking real aiming you're gonna be able to do like it's is on when the game first came out it just it felt like your mouse was emulating a control stick and it didn't feel good uh now it feels way better to me like i don't notice anything weird though there is sometimes where i think the game thinks i have a controller plugged in but i don't so it does some weird stuff sometimes but i think that's just me having a bunch of usb shit plugged in uh but yeah that's it for me and games I'm playing and all that stuff. This is way longer than I expected it to be. I'll be honest. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This lengthy solo podcast. Usually they're the solo ones don't go this long. Cause I'm, I don't think I'm that interesting or have that much to talk about. But now that I have a job again, oh, I'm going to run into people and people are weird. Sometimes they ask very specific things of you and you're like, what the fuck? Like, uh, somebody who doesn't know how to read, not like literally doesn't know how to read, but like a guy will come up and be like, Oh, is that a pound? It's like, no, this is a six ounce portion. It says it on the sign. They're like, Oh, can I get another? I'm like, that's only two thirds of a pound. If you want a pound, you're going to need to get one more. And you also want me to scan it. I mean, I can do it. It doesn't make any sense it's six ounces and you're probably losing a whole ounce <laughs> if I take all the skin off, but sure. But yeah, so that should be fun <laughs> for the podcast, not for me in the moment. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it seems, I, I think the, I don't, I didn't see the encoding overload thing pop up on OBS. So hopefully fingers crossed. I figured out a fix for this. That would be fucking awesome so that way I don't have to worry about that shit anymore and you guys get a good video podcast. That would be great. I'd be super, super duper stoked for that because you guys are paying money to see it and I don't want it to be bad. Duh. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Um, shout out to the patrons real quick before we're done here. Um, Achilles, Patrick, Cert, Quinn, and T-Rex. Thank you guys all all so much for being five dollar polisher patrons on the patreon you guys are awesome i appreciate you a ton um thank you so much to anyone else who listens for free you guys are also awesome do not get that twisted <clears throat> excuse me i appreciate anybody who still listens to this podcast uh through all the weird changes that have happened and through the kind of intermittent uh, schedule because of having a job and all that stuff. Um, sorry about how late this one is. I really am. If you've made it to the end, then, you know, me apologizing now is kind of weird, but also, you know, you're, you actually hear it. So that's great. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. All of you guys for listening. I appreciate the support. Uh, 
and a, like a big another shout out to the patrons. Thank you for believing in the pay, like the podcast enough to actually pay money for it. You guys are the best. I'm trying to do better by the Patreon. I swear. Uh, I will work in more time to like do things for the Patreon. I will. I that's a promise. Uh, everybody else, I hope you appreciate the podcast as is. Because <laughs> I do do a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure that it's you know going well and that it sounds good and all that stuff. So I'm glad anybody's still supporting it and listening. Uh, that's awesome to me, and it means a lot. And yeah, thank you again so much. If you like the Polish podcast, rate it, review it on iTunes. That helps the podcast get more. You know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Viewership? No, that's not it. Just it helps the podcast get more people, more eyes on it. There we go. Got there. Um, and then you know, if you like it, tell some friends. That's always good. And yeah, my name is Nico. Otherwise known as Nico All Powerful. It's a polished podcast. You can listen to it anywhere. Popular that you could podcast plus Stitcher and Podbean. Um, the popular places, if you for some reason need to know because you're listening on something else, are iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. And you can find me on Twitter at Nico Powerful. And that's N I C C O P O W E R F U L. Uh, Twitch at Nico or yeah, twitch.com slash Nico all powerful and I C C O A L P O W E R F U L and youtube.com slash Nico all powerful and I C O A L L P O W E R F U L. YouTube has one C in it because I don't think I can change the actual URL. The channel page has two C's on it, but I don't think I can change the URL to have two C's. YouTube's weird like that. And that's it for me. Um, thanks for listening. I hope you have a good rest of your day, evening, morning, whenever you're listening and yeah, see you later.